Please ignore the fact that it looks like I'm peeing on my pit fire. I'm genuinely trying to use both hands to wash my stuff off. <laughs> Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? So today is a very special day because this is probably the last pit fire load I'm going to be doing at this household. Many of you know by now that not only am I going to be moving, but I also need to move this pit fire, this above ground pit fire, into the new house. I don't want to pay for the materials, although the materials weren't that expensive. I still don't want to rebuild this entire thing and do an extra trip to Home Depot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uproot this and take it to the new house, which is partly why it's built like this. Most pit fires are built into the ground, but the ground is soft and wet, and if you rent a house, your landlord's gonna be really angry at you. So I decided to build a better one. Number one, this is much easier than digging a hole. Secondly, this top right here is metal. It puts in a lot more heat than you would think. And thirdly, I don't have to scorch the earth. I can actually plant stuff in my ground if I want to, later on. There is a bunch of reasons to have a non-traditional pit fire kiln and that this one is an above ground pit fire kiln. But today is the last day we're going to be doing this at this house. This is going to be the very last pit fire kiln we have in this house and I just wanted you guys to join me for that today. But this one's going to be a little bit different because instead of just loading the stuff in here and, and showing you guys how I load it, I'm going to take you through the entire process. So right now, we're gonna go to Smud and we're gonna pick up some wood chips and some burnable material because they just give that stuff away for free where I live. So what I have back here in my back seat are a couple of like toy box tubs that I've gotten from Home Depot just to make sure that I can carry everything in there. I'm not putting every raw material in the back seat of my uh, mediocre car. This is it. This big place right here, they pretty much put a big wood fence around it and then they just like dump all this mulch and burnable stuff here and anyone who wants to grab it can just grab it. It's so convenient because I used to go to Home Depot and just buy a bunch of burnable stuff and like kerosene and gas and I, I didn't need that kind of stuff. This is free. It used to cost me like 50 to 60 bucks a trip every single time. Now I don't need to. I can just contact Smud and be like, hey, I'm coming over to take the stuff you don't want off of your hands and they're happy for it really. I think that's about as much as we need. So now we have to go back to the house, wrap up the pottery, maybe in some tin foil, maybe use some oxides and carbonates. I don't have too much left. A lot of the stuff's at the new house. And then we're gonna see what results we can get from burning all this, it smells amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm, I'm a smell guy. This natural wood environment mulch, it smells, it smells so good. My car smells great for like a week after this. Okay, well we got all of our burnable stuff right in here. So now all we have to do is get all the pottery that we're gonna wrap up and pit fire. Well this should be all of it. I know there's some fairly larger stuff. This right here is about a foot and a half tall, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I had a bunch of stuff that I just didn't want to glaze for another kiln load because this is the last kiln load I'll be doing in this house with this specific kiln as far as my pit fire goes. So I kind of just like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just gonna pit fire all that. Okay, now I'm gonna get the big important stuff and start wrapping that up first. So that way I don't run out of materials as I get to the lesser stuff. Oh, that was all the foil I had. Great. Okay, well seeing as I am basically out of tin foil that scraps every single piece, 
I was planning to do except for that one piece. So now we're just going to put these in the kiln and make sure that the little tiny burrito bombs of color are underneath them. And of course we have my trusty sidekick, Hi, how are you? Kerosene. All right, it's all filled up. Um, what I usually do is I put stuff down, make sure it has the burritos for the color, and then I layer it, kerosene or gas, layer it, kerosene or gas. I keep doing this until I reach the top, and then I'll put one more layer of kerosene or gas. I prefer kerosene because gas is a little more dangerous. Potter tip. Usually by this point you would expect me to light this on fire and throw it in here so I don't burn myself as I light it myself because there's quite a bit of kerosene on here. But, I usually put the lid on first. If you put the lid on first and then light it on fire, this will make sure that you're not trying to hot scotch this thing on here while this is full flame. It's just a little bit safer and also I'm going to go get my gloves so that this doesn't burn me as well. Because the fire will be absorbed by the metal in this right here, making it almost untouchable. I am not a firebender at all. Okay, got the glove. Now let's light this on fire just a little bit. Move back a little, because last time you know what happened. Most of you know by now that I usually leave it partially open so that the air can get in there and the fire can feed off of the oxygen and keep on going. So we're gonna leave that there for about two hours. We are, for a lack of better term, going to let it candle before we close it up. Bonus points if you can throw your unwanted mail in there while you're pit firing. No, God! No, God, please! We're gonna close this up now and let it burn off because it's been candling. It's been kind of doing this for about an hour or so. So this has enough heat to close up now. Tomorrow. Okay, so it is morning now and I actually left this overnight. It's still hot. I know you guys can't feel it, but it is, it is definitely still hot. So let's see what we got in there. It's really weird because what actually happened is I tried to light this and then I went out for a little bit to let it candle and it looked like it smoldered out. It really looked like it just died. And when I came back in the morning, everything is set. So I guess I just had barely enough heat to keep this going. I completely thought I was gonna have to relight this in the morning. It's so hot that it's still smoking. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's a lot of smoke. <laughs> that is just steam alone from the residual heat from last night, from how many? One, two, three, from about 11 hours ago. There's a little bit of water in there, and if you can see it, it's so hot, the water that I put in there to cool it down is boiling. Just a tiny bit right there. So yeah, we're gonna leave that alone for a while, because boiling water 12 hours later should not be a thing. You know what, I'm gonna go and play some Destiny and edit some video, and I'm gonna come back to this, because that is probably way too hot to touch. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours now. I'm gonna see if they're at least, yeah, you know what? That's not, that's not too bad, I can probably spray these down. It's still super hot. I can't believe it has held heat for this long. I really cannot believe it. It, it, it almost never holds heat this long. Like bare hand in there? Yeah, okay. That's not too bad. Oh, that's some good, that's some good color right there. Yeah, that's nice. Man, I got some, I got some really good color on these actually. This, this ain't bad. Wow, I'm, I'm, oh, look at that. Dang. Hot dang there, Barbara. That's nice right there, I tell you what. I totally just broke one, didn't I? Yep. Yeah, I did. That's sad, because that was a nice one, too. Now it's just an empty hole of a, of a yarn bowl.
Oh, look at that one. That one got some really good red on it right there. Hopefully you guys can see it. But right here, I don't think that's just red iron oxide regular style. I think that's like actual color. I think that the main negative thing that I was really sad about is that this piece used to have this as a top to it, right? It used to be like this. And I was into this. I liked this shape a lot, but I think either the fire was too much for it, or as I stack stuff inside of the pit fire kiln, it drops on each other, and this was just too weak, so it snapped off. But luckily for me, it snapped off in such a way that it kind of still looks like a complete pot. I could very easily just sand this part down, and it still has a fantastic, look at that. That coloration is great right there. I'm, I'm probably gonna keep that, so this is still gonna stay in my house. This is one of those things that like, a bad thing happened, but it's still all good, yeah. This is gonna make a great addition. I'm, you know what? Even though it's technically a failure and the kiln gods took it, I'm, I'm gonna keep this. I like this a lot. The part that I'm really a, li a little bit angry about, I'm not like super mad or anything, but just hold on, stay there. I'm going to get something. Just go ahead, click the like button while, while you're waiting. So you guys saw me wrap this piece up in foil and put extra carbonates on it and, and kind of give it special treatment, right? And it didn't get any of the color. This right here was just sprinkled red iron oxide. And this side was the side that I put the colors on and it just turned mostly black and white, which is fine. That's, I like black and white, that's cool with me. The issue is that I gave this one special treatment and I purposely did not give this one right here special treatment. I wasn't too excited about it. And it came out way better than the other one. I'm actually quite quite sad um it's almost like the kiln gods were like hey you know how you gave this one literally no attention and this one over here you gave a bunch of attention we're just gonna switch that up um because we hate you a little bit and the coloration of white and black and the nice shapes that it's gotten here and even this texture right here it's real good real good this is i'm actually quite happy with this and it's one of my bigger pieces that took quite some time to make it's not just like a dinky little piece you know it's not like a cup or a bowl so this is actually, I could probably take this into an art show and be fine. And again, something like this, you know, I didn't really care about this piece at all. And then for some reason, it got really good color on this side and it got real, like actual real, if you can kind of see it, color right there. Look, it got real like actual color from the carbonates and oxides. Oh, you know how you gave this one special treatment the whole time? Yeah, we're just gonna make these other two and everything else fine. We're gonna take the one you put the most work into and just give everything else the swag. I will say the one thing that I was kinda sad about, but not really, is that one of the yarn bowls just broke off. You know, the little intake right here for the yarn just tore off. So I'm a little sad about that, but also I'd much rather them take this and give me something like these two than take more, you know, I, I'm kind of happy with this as far as that's concerned. You thought this was it. No, no, no. How dare you? How dare you think that I show you the most impressive stuff first? Let's go. These right here are probably the most impressive things that at least I think I got out of this entire kiln load. But look, check it out. This color is amazing. It almost looks like that bubble trick, but it's not. And there's even a little bit of red right there, if you can see it, that got on the plate. This is the winner to me of the kiln load, right? And of course, I got duplicates of it. I got this one here. It just didn't get as much color as far as that, that reduction that it soaks up usually in there. The first one I showed you was good. This one, this one got some color. How? Who knows? But man real good and then this one's probably the least favorite one out of the entire load but it still looks great it still looks really nice it has a nice splash of ash right there I'm actually extremely happy with these. I'm really happy with this one, especially. 
to be honest with you, this one has the most color, and that's kind of the goal in a pit fire as far as I'm concerned, because the back side, look, the back side has no color. This would be a lame pit fire, but the front, oh man, the front. I think that's gonna do it for me today. This was the official last kiln load we will ever have in this house. Say bye bye house. You put it, you put it in the comments below. You say bye to my house from the comments below. This has been a good pseudo studio for us. You better say bye to this house. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining us today. If you'd like to see any more of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful, pause, sexy Potter eyes to see. You can also join the Facebook and the Discord community. We have a bunch of other Dirty Potters over there who are way more knowledgeable about stuff than even I am. There's some real experts over there. Good luck on your guys' next kiln load, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. You know, you think that lighting stuff on fire and leaving it alone for the day would be easy. It's actually really hard, though. I have an entirely new respect for arsonists.